that we've made sure that there is a connection to the PLC via the web interface, it's time to launch PLC Next Engineer and connect via the IDE in order to start programming the PLC. There's going to be two important tabs when you start a project. So the first one is the project templates, and this is the easiest way to get a program going if you're just getting started. And then the recent projects tab, which is going to show all the recent projects that you've worked on. Of course, if you don't have any, this is going to be blank, but you can easily access the projects that you've already been working on by selecting the name and then opening the project in the IDE. All that being said, we're going to use the project template for the AXCF 2152 version 2021.6.0 as it was specified in the web interface. Once the project is launched, the most important tab is going to be the plant tab. Here we can expand the project to show the PLC currently being used under the project. And then we can expand the PLC to show various input and output points of the hardware. The first thing that we're going to do is look at the project configuration. So make sure to double click the project line and this is going to open a new tab in the center of your screen pay attention that you can also double click the plc and that's going to open different settings so there is a difference between opening the project and opening the plc let's navigate back to the project by selecting the appropriate tab and take a look at a few settings so the first one is the ip range our project is going to scan for all available devices between the ip address of 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.254 since by default our plc does fall within that range we're going to be able to connect to it via the online controller tab however if you were to change the ip address as i've mentioned in the previous video and you leave the set of the project scan as is, they're not going to be able to locate the controller. So pay attention to the range that you're going to set for your project. Now, if we go into online controllers, this is where the controller for the project via what's we're, what we're connected to is going to be displayed. And I'm just going to shift this over a little bit so we can see better, but make sure that you understand that this controller before we are connected to anything is going to be the settings that are set in the project. And where you can change this IP address, if we go into our controller tab, here we can either scroll down or we can just click on the ethernet settings. You'll notice that we can set manual in order to change the IP address. And here as an example, you can type in a different IP address. And of course it needs to match what you've typed in in the web interface in order to correspond to the same settings. We're going to leave it at 10 and that was just for demonstration purposes. Let's go back into our project and look at the online controllers. Now, in order to connect to our controller, we're going to have to first specify the network card that will be used for that connection. And I've mentioned this in the previous lecture where we've selected the USB adapter in order to talk to our PLC. So make sure that the right network card for your specific instance is selected. Once selected, we can press on scan the network button and that should be able to locate the controller on the right hand side of this project. So what you'll notice is that if the IP address corresponds to the IP address in the project, there's going to be a PLC that's going to appear on the right hand side. And once again, if you're looking to confirm the MAC address, that's going to be listed on the hardware the revision is going to have to match between the project and the actual hardware that you're programming. If it doesn't, you do need to go through the process of upgrading the firmware. Now, everything seems to match, and if everything is, in fact, ready to go, you will see a status of OK on your PLC. So right here, we have a check mark. In order to write this project to the PLC, what we can do is right click the plc underneath the project settings and then we can click on connect first and foremost you will be asked for the same login credentials that we wrote in the past uh, so remember credentials press on okay if everything is good you'll notice that there is a connection to the plc if we go into the plc tab and navigate into the cockpit you'll notice that there will be status indicators as well as storage, memory, and CPU load bars. If you see these changing, this means that you're connected, that this connection is highlighted. Now, in order to write the program, which we're going to modify later on, 
you can right click this PLC and write and start project. So we're going to select that. You'll notice that it's going to compile all of the logic of which there is none at this point, but it's going to compile the project and then load it onto the PLC. And if everything's successful, you should see a confirmation in the bottom right hand side. So at this point, the controller is running the project that is the same as the program inside of PLC Next Engineer. Now that we are live with the processor, let's take the necessary steps in order to start programming. So under the PLC, you'll find the PLC Next routine that will be pre-populated with an existing program that will allow you to select a different language of choice for programming. So there's the routine maintenance. So if we right click this maintenance main, we can go to type and this will allow us to select a programming language of your choice for the worksheet. So obviously we've got structured text, we've got function blocks, and we've got ladder logic. Now, if you try and choose it like this, you're not going to be able to, and that's because we are online and live with the processor. So what we need to do is right click the PLC and then select this connect button. A gray symbol will appear next to the name. And at this point, we can select by double clicking the ladder logic in this specific instance. So the interface will open. And at this point, you can create any ladder logic that you will need. One thing, of course, to point out is that since we don't have any IO configured, you're not going to be able to connect to the inputs and outputs that have been pre-populated on the starter kit. So at this point, we can only choose some of the internal tags. So if I use this XIC instruction as an example, we can scroll down and find some of these status indicators that we can use from the PLC right out of the box. But what we'll have to start with in the next tutorial is adding the IO cards that we had seen a few videos ago and then configuring them in order to be able to utilize them in ladder logic or any other programs of our choice for PLC next. 